reverse optic capture of a Toric IOL, a three-part video, unfortunately. Uh, Steve Dewey, I'm at the Colorado Springs Eye Clinic in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I am a consultant AMO and receive royalties from AM MST. So this is the story of the Catalyst laser meeting an SN60AT, assisted along the way by both a lens start and eye trace, and a 69-year-old patient with a 25.79 millimeter axial length and a 12.72 millimeter diopter white to white. So as we look at the eye trace scan, I'm reviewing this with the patient, showing her beautiful limbus to limbus astigmatism, which correlates very highly with the same readings that we obtained with the lens star. And so as we're planning her surgery, we're talking about removing the posterior subcapsular cataract, which produced the upper middle image as seen in the eye trace, which actually is a very accurate reproduction of what the patient sees. And so it's actually fascinating to show them that. So here we've been through the catalyst femtosecond laser procedure. You see two black marks at the 3 and 9 position, and that's where we're basically placing our marks with a vertically oriented beam at the slit lamp, the YAG laser slit lamp, in the preoperative area of the surgery center. And that allows me to more accurately place the uh, patient interface and align it to exactly the 180 degree meridian, even if I can't get the fiducials to properly align. So once the, the laser has done its trick, obviously we're in the operating room, we're using a Dewey radius tip that is a 20 gauge internal lumen, 21 gauge external diameter needle. And we're using an awful lot of vacuum and an awful lot of motion to disrupt the nucleus, but not a lot of nuclear rotation, not a lot of manual work, just a lot of vacuum and a little bit of power to essentially uh, chew our food, if you will, as we remove the material down the lumen of the needle with, with basically the fluidics of the machine alone. Now, I always discuss with toric lens patients the chance that the lens is going to rotate. And I describe this to them that it's a uh, 1 out of 15 chance. And I think we have to keep the numbers at a very reasonable, manageable number uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, early on, I think when we were lowing, working with the lower power torx, we weren't worried about a little bit of rotation. And with the higher power torx, a little bit of rotation can go a long way. So that was J cannula irrigation, remove the cortex and polish the posterior capsule. Here we're adding a cohesive viscoelastic to the anterior segment and the capsule and trying to get the SN60 uh, AT uh, T9 lens in. And I, I folded it upside down. There was a, I was playing with the idea that in these exceptionally large eyes, we can achieve better capsule contact by not having a viscoelastic coating on the optic, uh, the posterior surface of the optic, before we implant the lens. And I actually did some work a long time ago demonstrating that you could really decrease the tackiness of these lenses by leaving them exposed to viscoelastic for a long period of time. It doesn't matter which acrylic lens you're talking about. Um, and so I don't have my staff fold the lens early. I actually have them wait and fold the lens later. Um, and the second thing I did, of course, was, was maintain the posterior surface of the optic relatively free from viscoelastic so that it would have a better chance to oppose to the capsule when I'm done. So uh, do a lot of checking here. And, and we've got some really wonderful alignment already with the toric alignment marks on the cornea produced by the catalyst. And they line up very well with the uh, alignment marks you see at the base of the haptics on the optic of the lens. And so I'm just not pleased. You know, I can get one set of marks lined up really well, get the next set of alignment marks lined up really well. And one of the factors, I think, in these cases is you really want to get the haptics to distend, extend fully. So that's really good alignment. That's not bad there at all. We're getting exceptionally close. And as we zoom in, we see that we've, we're uh, just right there. We've got the corneal marks just beautifully positioned. We've got a perfectly centered circular capsulotomy, which is incredibly resilient to manipulation. And we're using the Mastel alignment ring because quite honestly, I'm, I'm not used to the femtosecond laser entirely. We've had it for two and a half months at the, the point I'm taking this video. Um, and again, we see some beautiful results, some wonderful clarity, some very good alignment between the toric lens and the alignment marks. And I'm done, right? I mean, this patient's fantastic. One week later, 
comes back and the world isn't clear and you look and we, we're looking at the dysfunctional lens index and no, that lens is, is looking great, except there's something there I didn't, wow, we now have eight and a third diopters of astigmatism. I wonder if she likes glasses.